Hello and thank you for checking out my Batman Arkham Asylum hard mode any percent no damage run. While I do use various speedrunning techniques and routing, this is not a speedrun. Time is not a consideration or factor for this challenge run, only not taking damage. The majority of my commentary will highlight combat strategy and therefore will mostly apply during encounters with enemies. So while I'm running around from point A to point B, there won't be much for me to discuss, so I'll likely be silent during those areas. If you have any questions on anything in this run, please feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, yes, sit back, please, relax, and done. thank you again for joining me for this challenge run. I hope you enjoy it. Since the intro for this game is quite lengthy, coming in at around 8 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the first combat encounter, which will be where the run technically starts, since that is our first opportunity to take damage. So as we start the encounter, we're going to have three guys in front of us, one to the right, two to the left, so I'm going to start attacking the one on the right, and then bounce between all three. Once all three are on the ground, I'm going to go ahead and do a takedown. We'll get them all on the ground again, do another takedown, and then hit the final guy to finish him off. And that'll kind of be a recurring theme for this uh, for this run, is keeping as many people on the ground as possible and then finishing them off. So we're going to go in here and get a Riddler trophy that gives you XP. Um, and that's the only reason that I'm getting that. And then we're going to do the same thing again as we did with the last group, bounce back and forth once they're on the ground. Go ahead and finish them off and then uh, repeat. And once that last guy is done, then that's the section. We're going to go up and wait for the dialogue to finish, and then we'll move on. Joker's in full control of the security gates. I'll find a way out. Gordon, try and contact the warden. Let him know what's happened. I'll be back. Don't make promises you can't keep, Bats. I'm in control of the asylum. You're not going anywhere I don't want you to. Understand? If you think I'll let you run. Bah, bah, bah. Always with the heroes of you. Looking forward to watching you. Why don't you just come find me? You know it's a trial. So I'm gonna go ahead and break the Joker teeth in front of me. They uh, they give you experience, and that's really the only reason that I do that. And we'll do that a couple more times. Actually, we'll do that quite frequently uh, to pad XP. So with these guys, we're going to come in, hit the first guy, go ahead and cape stun the second. Take down the guy that's on the ground, and then we'll finish off the last one. Now I'm going to do a dodge roll here, and that's just basically to get ahead of the trigger that slows you down for the communications that comes through. Um, so... Just to get a little bit more distance, and then we'll go ahead and, you know, click through that uh, dialogue and then move on. So we'll go off to the left here. We'll go ahead and go into Detective Vision to give me the ability to get on the Gargoyle statue. Then we're going to move to here. We'll hit Zaz with the Batarang, and then we'll drop down, and we'll do a ground finisher to deal with that. And that's that. That's probably the easiest quote-unquote boss <laughs> in the entire Arkham series to take out. Try the radio. Control should be able to shut down the gate. Harley thinks she has me trapped yeah, in this chamber. Batman. She never was very Batman. bright. I'm patching you into the guard radio feed. Steve, more Blackgate prisoners. By the boiler. Who's that behind them? Oh my god, it's Joker. He's free! How'd he break out? So again, I'm going to point out, we're going to get this Riddler trophy for the XP that it gives. And again, that's the only reason. Um, and that'll that'll be the last time I say that. Any uh, subsequent trophies we pick up um, or teeth that we break, like I'm about to do here, uh, is solely for XP padding um, to get abilities. What is that stuff? Joker toxin. Listen. The room is full of poison gas. Anyone caught in there is dead. Are you gonna get in there and help them, Batman? I can see 
This isn't a simple assignment. So the interesting thing for this room is you're supposed to, or I guess the game wants you to go and save these various people. Uh, you don't actually have to do that. And we can just run right through to the very end, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to run over to here, we'll turn left, we'll break the panel, get all the gas out of the room, and then we'll move on. So we're going to have two guys here, we're going to do the same thing, hit, cape stun, take down, and then finish off the last one. Alright, so we're going to have our first mutated um, prisoner here, and put simply, the game wants us to basically just dodge this guy the entire time. Uh, you can beat up on him, but I find it really doesn't do anything. So I moved to this position because he's always going to throw that first um, body, and then after that he's going to charge, and I'm just going to dodge in this direction and stand up against this electric field. So as he dodges the second time, we'll let him crash into that electrify him. I'll move over to this side of the room. Now, what happens from here uh, depends on how far he moves out into the room. If he's close enough to a body, he'll throw a body. But if he's not, which is what happened here, he'll prioritize charging. So I'm just going to go ahead and dodge roll that and then move to the other side of the room because he's got a body right beside him. He will always prioritize that. And then I'm just going to put myself all the way against the wall. And for whatever reason, when I do that, he just auto-drops. Like, he just auto-drops and finishes the encounter. Um, maybe that's a time thing. Uh, maybe there's some other um, variable there that I'm not um, under fully understanding. But uh, that happens every single time that way. So if you do that strategy, it should work that way for you uh, as well. Cells. Bowles wasn't too smart. He'll have left a trail. Batman, what's happening? Okay, Bruce. I bet you're wondering how I did it. Was it a clue the great detective missed? <laughs> for the two enemies ahead i'm simply just going to approach and stealth take down one or attempt to and then we'll just bounce right into the other one and finish them off so what's the plan isolate something in that room unique to both exactly i can follow traces of alcohol from frank's bourbon in the atmosphere Oracle, I've got- That's great. I should switch to my forensic scan and reveal the trail. The darn elevator. Stupid, unreliable. Ow. Ow. What the hell happened? I do like that, T-Man! No way you're following us now. They're trapped down there till me and Mr. J are finished. Ha ha ha! Hey, Babs! I don't know you can hear me. I've got a little something for you to listen to. Harley and Frank are nearly out of the building with the old man. How are they going to get past all those guards? Let's have a listen, shall we? Hey, Frank, where you been? Yeah. Joker's got one man on the way. They're coming around the front of the asylum. Gotta stop them 
So for the enemy set coming up, this is going to be our first time having to fight more than just two enemies, and that obviously poses a lot of risk. The, the, the system for this game is not um, polished to the degree that allows no damage to be very simple. There's basically you have to play the game different than probably you would want to play it. Meaning that you basically want to prioritize counters when enemies are close to you and grouped up. And then you kind of want to also prioritize going from enemy to enemy using the, the mechanic and the system that allows you to cover that distance quickly, automatically. Um, so for example, you hit one and then Batman will jump to the, like, across the room to the other one. So you really want to leverage that mechanic and try and keep enemies separated because once enemies are separated and um, you can do a finisher on one while the other enemies are far enough away from you that if they get up, they have to then run to you to get to you. That time they would have to run to you will allow you to finish that takedown because when you're doing the takedown animation, you cannot counter. So it's always a risk to do a takedown. Um, if enemies are too close to you because then they could potentially hit you and there's nothing you could do about it. So I'm going to hit that guy and uh, we're just going to ignore him. Basically we just ignored this whole section. Um, we're going to go into the vent and then we'll continue forward. Hey hey kids, it's your friendly Uncle Jay. Attention, we have an escaped patient. So as we come out of this vent, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take down these enemies um, one at a time. We'll do a loud takedown on this guy which is fine. We're going to go up top here and uh, we'll do a stealth takedown on this guy or... Yeah, okay. I just do a regular takedown. I, I just kind of do whatever the game <laughs> prompts me to do. If I get the if I get the silent takedown, I get it. If not, then whatever. That time I didn't get it. So we picked up that collectible for the um, XP. And then we're going to move up to this gargoyle. Hit this last guy, come down, we'll do the takedown and that'll be it. Search this area once I cleared the room. So for these enemies, I this is this is like one of my favorite uh, strats here, just because it's hilarious. Um, we're basically gonna have them climb up, and if you basically if you hit an enemy as they're climbing up, um, any any decent elevated area, they're they're just gonna die as soon as they fall down or get knocked out. So uh, simply you just uh, hit the first one, and as long as you time it right, uh, the other two will follow you. Now sometimes um, if you if you mistime it, they won't follow you. Uh, and, and instead, one of the enemies will go all the way behind you, basically back there to my uh, um, to the top right of what you're seeing right here. They'll go all the way back there. There's a ladder, and they can come up. If that happens, you basically just see it, run over there, hit that guy off the ladder, then turn around, run back. You'll um, actually target the last guy coming up. Um, you'll hit him and then you can take him now. So this will be where we get introduced to, um, you know, Riddler's uh, riddles, right? Um, so we're going to get as many of these as we can um, that are not out of my way. So if they're uh, along the route, then we'll go ahead and pick these up. These just give extra XP. And um, that'll help pad um, f the XP bar for abilities. Ready for your first one? Good. But be careful. Don't cut yourself on this sharply observed portrait. So you did it. Well done. I would have expected a child to work that one out, let alone the world's greatest detective. <laughs> Over here! It was a massacre. What? Bowls good.
So I do want to note we're going to pick up another riddle here. It's the radio on the side, and then we're going to move on. So when I get to the top here, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the um, the, the twin battering ability. Um, from this point forward, there are just so many areas where enemies are grouped together that it's useful. Now you can use it here, but it's kind of spotty. It's not 100% guarantee you get both of them down. So I just choose a silent take down the first one, and then we can deal with the second one. Um, but you actually can do the double take down there. It's just, uh, I've lost a couple of runs <laughs> because it didn't take him down. He turns around and shoots at you and you can't do anything about it. That's it feels bad. So For these enemies, uh, very similar to the first large group, you basically want to take it slow. Prioritize counters when enemies are grouped up around you. Um, and then you're basically just waiting for an opportunity to be able to spread them out now. Um, you can use the quick battering like I did there uh, to try and aid with getting people off the gra like off the board, so to speak. Um, but for the most part, you, you want to try and get distance, get people away from each other so that you can do takedowns. So see, that's good. I've got a couple of guys back there. Um, this should be a good spot to now ping pong back and forth between all of them, just like this. And because I have such distance from the other ones, I was able to get that off. Granted, barely, but I was able to get that off. Um, use batarangs to take down the people to the right so I could get the guy on the left, etc, etc. So that's a very, very good example of basically my strategy with large groups. Um, for, the, for the most part, there are uh, certain areas in the run where you kind of have to refine it a little bit. And it's not that straightforward, but for the most part, the blanket strategy is is that. Harley trashed the car. Looks like there was a scuffle. I need to search the area around the Batmobile. There could be a clue as to where she took Gordon. I need to isolate a trail in the crime scene around the Batmobile that'll lead me to Gordon. <laughs> So the strategy that's coming up um, is a speedrunning strategy, which means to pull this off, you need to be very, very, very fast in executing it. Um, there is a gadget swap for this, so you need to be very fast on the gadget swap as well. But what we're going to do is, as soon as we drop into the area, and you'll see this coming up in a second, as soon as we drop into the area, I want to make sure that explosive gel is in my hand because we're going to put that on the wall. 
And then we're going to go up to the right on the gargoyle, and we're going to look back towards the wall, and we're going to wait for the guard on the right to pass right in front of the pot, the plant that's to his right right now. We'll explode it. We'll quickly change to dual batter or twin batterings. We'll hit the guys under us, and then we'll take them down. And then once these guys are taken down, we're going to go up to the gargoyle again and then swing across the room. Um, and then we're going to just knock this guy down and take him down. And that'll clear this whole room out. Um, but that, as soon as you get the explosive gel to explode, that, mo that moment going into swapping into twin batterings and hitting both of the enemies is, needs to happen like very, very quickly. Otherwise, you're not going to get that strategy off. They're going to spread out, and then you'll have to deal with them in a much slower way, which, again, is not a problem. I don't know what happened. Um, but the reason I adopted that speedrunning strat is because it's been 100% consistent as long as I don't mess it up and I'm not too slow. So for the next couple of groups of enemies, basically they're just doubles. So what we're going to do is we'll just use twin batterings, run up, and uh, do takedowns on both of them. So that's what you'll see on this group, and then the group um, through this door. So as we gain control of Batman, we're going to go to the left um, into the room and we're going to pick up another riddle and then we'll move forward. Changes to the brain are related to the length of psychotic episodes. Project Titan allows us to strengthen the individual. So we're going to have another big group of enemies here, and this is kind of a small room. Um, so you want to make sure you have twin batterings for that. As soon as you come out of the cutscene, you want to look up and throw. Generally, you'll get one guy um, taken out just off that throw. Um, from there, you're going to stick to the same, uh, you know, strategy that I explained earlier. Try and spread these guys out. Get as many of them on the floor as you can to do takedowns. Otherwise, if they're too close to you, prioritize dodging, prioritize counters until you can make a scenario that will allow you to take them down with uh, without any danger. Don't get too full of yourself, Bats. I'm just softening you up. Think of this as a preview to the main event. You'll I'm see. Sorry. Really? Remember, a happy patient is a quiet patient. Oh, I'm not sure I can keep it a secret any longer. I've got two old friends coming to the party. One of them is just terrified. 
find you leave. Now say hello. The other, well, let's just say he's going to be a surprise to see you, and you will be to see him. So we're going to have three enemies down this hallway, so I can't the camera so I'm already looking at them and then throw batterings. Uh, most of the time you'll get both, like you'll get two of the three on the ground. This time I only got one and the other one just slightly staggered out. If you want to make it 100%, you could take cover on the side of the wall and then throw it and then move forward. Um, I don't usually have an issue with that, like that group of enemies, so... Uh, I, don't, I don't feel like that's necessary for me, but if you're having problems with it, just go ahead and take cover on that wall before you go down the hallway. Throw them, and then you'll be good. You'll always get two of them down at that point. So not a whole lot to speak to on this area. This is um, pretty scripted. We're just going to put explosive gel on both these walls. Um, there are three enemies on this one, two enemies on the other one. Um, and then as we explode this, that will take care of all five of them, and uh, we can talk to Dr. Young and then move on. What's going on? Not a problem. All staff have been rescued. You'll be safer if you remain here. All the medical staff are safe. Time to continue following. Alright, so as we approach this uh, this present, we're going to get our first bladed enemy. You're simply just going to do a cape stun on him. Hit him a couple of times, we'll take him out. And then we can uh, pick up the Joker teeth, which should complete the challenge. It did. There we go. For some extra, extra XP. <laughs> and then we can move on. Asylum. Our staff are here to help you. When Amadeus Arkham built this fine institution, few would have believed it could be the premier psychiatric evaluation. After this cutscene, uh, we're going to get some enemies that come into the area. And I think the game wants you to fight these. I don't. Just simply glide down, go into the elevator, and congratulations, you finished it. <laughs> um, now, I do throw uh, batterings here. That's to try and get the Joker teeth for the extra XP, and I clearly did not get any of them there, which is really crazy, because I don't think I've ever done that where I didn't get at least one. <laughs> so, whatever. That's fine. Um, ultimately, I guess it didn't matter, because, you know, we got the run done, but... Um, I throw them there just to try and get whatever I can get out of it. Only kidding. Got a few more surprises in store for you. Prepare to face your fears. All of them! I'm sorry, Jim. Barbara.
Okay, for the Scarecrow section here, there's really not a whole lot to talk to here, guys. Um, basically, just follow what I do. There is a much faster way of doing this. Again, this isn't a speed run, but I just want to state that. Uh, there is a faster way to do it. However, it's very, very tight timing. And if you mess that up, then you are absolutely going to be seen. And I'm not allowed to quote-unquote die. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically, when you see the retry screen, that is not allowable in my rule set. So if that happens, I would have to start the whole game over again. So I take it very slow and just wait for the opportunities, and then I go through the area. So if you're doing this, you want to follow my example, that'll get you through every time without any issue. So what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go ahead and pick up our next battering upgrade. Um, so for the multi-battering, this will be the triple battering. This is going to be very, very useful for so much of this run. Um, most notably, you know, what's coming up, which is the Bane fight. So make sure that you pick that up at a minimum before the Bane fight. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put explosive gel down at this door. So after Joker gets done talking, uh, this door is going to come open, three enemies are going to come through. Basically this is going to put them on their ass and allow me to go in and finish off the most dangerous ones. Technically you can just run right past them after you do this. In fact, you can just run right past them without actually putting them on the ground at all. Um, I just found that it's safer for me to put them on the ground, finish off, look back. If that guy's not up yet coming at me, then I can go forward without an issue. So for the self section coming up, um, pretty much if you get seen, it's game over. So you absolutely cannot get seen here. Plus, every enemy here has a gun. So if they see you anyways, you're screwed. So uh, basically my approach is to just do takedowns on uh, two of the five that are in the room. That'll clear the way to get to Gordon or to get to the top to where I can bash into the room where Gordon's at. So just follow my path here. Make sure that you hold tight here and just be patient. As this guy paths around, we'll hit him, we'll go up. We'll take him out, and then we can proceed up the stairs and uh, to the boss fight with Bane. This old man looks like he's gonna pee himself. Someone bring me. So this boss fight with Bane, guys, is absolutely ridiculous because uh, this is this is the first time where the issues with the combat system in this game will really start to show itself. So I have a lot of rules in this um, fight to get through it consistently without taking damage. And even then, uh, it's very easy to take damage through no fault of your own. So what this boils down to is um, we're going to go through this phase one. So Bane at the top right, he has three bars. Um, phase one is first bar, phase two second, phase three third. So after phase one, he's going to call in enemies. And then after a certain amount of time, he's going to call in more enemies. And these are all standard enemies. They don't have guns. They don't have objects. Uh, they just have fists. And what makes this difficult is you have to you have to work around Bane while prioritizing them. You're not actually, you don't really care about Bane as far as doing damage to him here. You just care about dealing with the enemies. Now the rules are that I can only sprint kick into the enemies and ping pong back and forth. So what I just did back there when I went one, two, three, what I'm doing right now, going through the enemies like that. That is the only way that I can attack these enemies. Countering them is potentially gonna get you hit because Batman will just randomly do a slow motion finisher. If that happens or occurs while Bane is charging into you or throwing a rock, you're going to take damage because you can't cancel the animation. 
So you can't counter. Um, and then you also can't just stand still and punch. Because the system sometimes will just not recognize it. And if I remember correctly, I actually don't mean to do it here in this fight. But there is like one or two times, if I remember correctly, where it happens. Where I'm trying to do a sprint attack. Or I'm trying to do a um, ping pong back and forth. And the system just doesn't take it. It doesn't recognize that and it just punches. And so the problem with the punch is... 50% of the time, maybe even more than that, you'll go to punch and Batman will just not hit the enemy, but the enemy will hit you. So you can't, for that reason, you cannot just stand still and punch. So that's basically my rule set for this. I'll um, I'll call out if it happens when that, uh, when that occurs. I'm pretty sure it happens at least once here. But, um... Is it those... Uh, those issues, those concessions that you have to make to do this consistently without damage is really frustrating. It makes this fight very frustrating. So, um, basically what you what you need to do is what I'm doing here. So that one right there was meant to be a, um, a sprint kick and it just ended up being a punch. Which is dangerous, like I said. But, um, basically what you want to do is you just want to build up enough to use your triple battering so usually that consists of running in doing a sprint kick and then after that you'll be at a plus two on your combo and then you can turn around throw and it'll knock three people to the ground and you want to do that for crowd control you want to do that to give bane the opportunity to hit them with his various attacks um it reduces your risk because you don't have to deal with so much at the same time so there's a lot of benefit to that and that's basically what i uh what i do for this fight that's my approach just do the kick Knock them down with batarangs. If you can get ground finishers, do it as long as you can do it safely. And uh, that's pretty much the fight. It, as I'm saying, and I'm making it sound a lot easier than it is, this fight is hell on earth. I absolutely loathe this fight, and I'm very grateful that it's so early in the run. Um, yeah, you know, that way, if you get hit, you just restart the run. You didn't lose too much time. Um, but this fight fucking sucks. <laughs> Uh, if you're going to try this yourself, good luck. Um, try and follow my rule set, and with practice, uh, you'll likely do. I once saved an unfortunate inmate from leaping off into the rocks below. I found a cave entrance and over the years have moved a number of supplies here. It's a regular home away from home. It's the bat! Disabled. 
enabling countermeasures. Security deactivated. Going after her. She was heading to the mansion with cash. I'm going up top via the catacomb. So as we drop out of this uh, vent, we're going to have to deal with one guy. Not a big deal. We'll just uh, battering him and finish him off. Um, we are going to have five around this next corridor. Um, but uh, we'll just take out three of them on the left. Go in, hit two of them. Um, go ahead and take one of them out. Coming off of that, you usually will be able to battering. And um, the other ones would already be mostly standing up for you to connect with. They didn't really there, but... Um, every other subsequent takedown and then battering worked out fine. So uh, you just do a takedown and then battering, and if you keep doing that, you'll uh, you'll keep your combo counter high enough that you can still use your batterings coming off of each one of those takedowns. Scared. I'm coming up to the surface. I'll find her. So we have to get across this uh, courtyard without basically being seen by the snipers. So what I like to do is I like to go up to this um, tower. And generally when you get up here, you're going to have two different, or you have the chance of having two different scenarios. I've got the worst scenario, which is um, <laughs> basically they were both standing together. Um, generally what happens most of the time what happens is one is looking one way the other one's looking the other way so I just wait until the far one turns looks towards like me as the one closest the looks away and then I hit him but it's whatever so once we get into here you're always going to kick the guy on the left you'll one two the guys on the right throw batterings do a takedown and then from here it's just um, uh, doing basically what you did in the sewer which is um, doing a, doing batterings, take down, batterings, take down. Um, I messed it up, as you can clearly see, <laughs> but um, I was able to pull it back. And, and what got messed up, if you kind of rewind the bot here, is um, I, I, meant to, I meant to do batterings, but I accidentally hit twice, which kind of messed up the rhythm. So as we go into this area, we're going to want to go ahead and um, use our, our detective mode so that we can see when the sniper is on us. So you'll know that a sniper is on you either from the red uh, track line or the high-pitched frequency that you're hearing. 
And all you're going to do is as soon as that starts, you're just going to dodge roll nonstop until you're into this location. Then you're going to want to look up and make sure that both of the enemies are looking left and are no longer moving. Now, once you get up here, you're going to go ahead and get your back claw and you need to make sure that you perfectly get this vent because if you shoot the back claw and do not connect that vent, you will pull those two enemies into combat with you and you'll take a shot before you can react. So for these enemies, not too much to talk to here. We're just going to glide over them, and then we're going to uh, grapple up and then continue. So through this door, we'll have one enemy. Basically, we're just going to run at him and do a sprint kick, um, and that'll take care of him. So as we go into this next room, you want to make sure that you have detective mode on and you have your bat claw. So when you come through the door, you're going to look up to the left. You're going to pull this guy over the ledge, which will instantly take him out. And then we're going to go up to the gargoyle. So we're going to swing over and then we're going to go down into the second like second floor. We're going to grapple this guy over the edge and then we're going to go back up to a gargoyle. And then we're going to see how the enemies are placed. Generally, this guy will be segregated from the rest. So we'll want to go ahead and knock him down and take him out. Then we're going to go back up to the gargoyle and we're just going to wait. Um, pretty much every enemy that's left in the area should populate into the center here. So you'll just want to be on a gargoyle that gives you a good vantage point to get the triple battering on them, and then you can go in and take them all up. Six guys. Oh, oh. Not anymore. Stay silent and I'll be back. Thanks. Going after the notes yourself, eh? So not a whole lot to talk to here. I just want to mention why I'm grappling the grate. That's simply just to slightly speed up being able to get into it. It's uh, it's not that much of a time saver, but every second helps. So I, I do it just to save a little bit of time. So for this next set of enemies, generally it's fairly simple. You just triple battering them, go in and take them down. But for whatever reason here, my second takedown just didn't take. He just started countering for some reason. So I had to uh, improvise just slightly, but generally that won't happen. You'll be able to throw, you know, your triple battering, go in, take two down, Joker's and just, thoughts just kick were the trying to get into that office. It looks like they couldn't get through the main door. Got to find a different way in. I'm on Dr. Young. Ah. So for the enemies up ahead, it's very important that you glide coming out of this vent. You want to basically be standing in front of the first enemy as the doors open and you land. So you can go ahead and build combo to knock him down and then throw your batterings. Um, after that, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, you're just going to take down as many as you can safely and then you can either use hits or batterings to keep the other ones um, down on the ground while you take them out. So for this section coming up, this is probably one of my favorite strategies in the entire game. I'm pretty proud of this one. So you want to make sure that you have battering equipped and we're going to turn right and there's a whole bunch of guys in front of us. So. We just want to get their attention, so we're going to hit them, that'll aggro them in, and then we're going to move to this position, 
make sure you're in detective mode so you can track how many are coming at you um, and, and where they're coming at you from. But you wanna let them filter in and once they get basically right in front of this cage, you wanna climb up, go over to your back claw, and then it'll be two pulls generally to hook them and you wanna just pull them into the electric fence. And we're basically going to rinse and repeat that over and over again until all of these enemies are defeated. Uh, this is a slow strategy. It's a bit cheesy, but um, the name of the game here is no damage, right? So you, we're ba I'm basically looking for whatever strategy is going to give me the best possible chance of success and be repeatable and consistent over and over and over again. So for me, that strategy was this. Um, so if you're going to do this run, or if you just want to try this strategy out, have fun with it. It's pretty cheeky, but um, it'll give you a few laughs every now and then. So I just want to note that once you, and you, you probably already figured this out, but once you, uh, you know, once you take out the enemies that are there, you, you do want to drop down and then you'll kind of move around. Um, in that same spot on the cage to re-engage the enemy AI to then come up to you. So it's just a rinse and repeat of that over and over again. Now, for whatever reason, this guy got stuck. This happens sometimes, um, not very often, but sometimes it does happen. If that happens, just do what I do, run up to him, hit him, and uh, then you can move on. So you'll have two enemies ahead of you here. Basically, we're just going to corner um, corner hide here, and then we're going to throw battering on the first guy. We'll run in, hit the second guy to your left. We'll take down the first guy, and then we'll kick the second guy, and that'll be that. For the library, you want to triple battering the first three that you see, and then immediately run to the right, knock this guy down, and finish him off. From there, generally what you want to do is you, you want to use battering immediately, and that's what I messed up. So if this looks a little jank, it's because uh, I messed up the strat, and then I had to improv, and I was slightly panicking at this point. Um, but it's okay, I came out of it fine. Um, if you do get in this position, just uh, prioritize dodging, prioritize gaining distance, and um, get combo where you can to use batterings to knock people down. Um, same as pretty much every other encounter in the game so far. Now I will say that um, I had originally done this a different way where I skipped this library fight and that turned out to not be a good idea. And I'll, uh, I'll mention what this fight is attached to later, but the, um, the gist of it is, is if you skip this fight, you're going to end up having to fight enemies later in a different section and in a much tighter closed area which makes the possibility of taking damage much higher so yes you can skip this fight make sure you don't skip this fight and um full kudos and credits to uh shiken and uh, bepsi from the speed running community for explaining to me why the hell um i was getting enemies in the uh the section that i'll speak to later Thank you, Batman. Billy, I heard... So, Dr. Young was trying to hide her research notes on the formula when she was... Where did you find them? No, not the formula! <laughs> Who can help? I can't believe you insisted on sitting through that movie again, Bruce. Come on, we'll be late for Alfred. I'm sorry, Daddy. Go easy on him, Tom. He loved it, so Alfred will wait. Keep up, Bruce. Where are 
are you taking us? We can cut through here. But it's starting to rain. Bruce is tired. Can't we just wait for him here? Come on, keep up. We're nearly there. Hold it there, Oh, God! Please, there's no need for this. Stay where you are. I'll shoot. I'll give you whatever you want. <laughs> Come on, kid, this way. Take a seat in my office. Is he okay? He'll be fine. Kid like that, with all that money, he'll be just fine. Shut up, no. He's eight years old and all alone. Money won't fix that. Whatever you say, Gordon. His butler's on his way to pick him up. You hear that? He's got a butler. I'm sorry about that. I just need to ask you some questions. Can I get you anything? You okay? I know you don't feel like answering me, but it's the only way to catch who did this. <laughs> Why did do you do it, officer? Why? I don't know. It's this city. There's something wrong with it. And listen, son. Call me Jim. So there's not a whole lot to talk to here for this Scarecrow section, um, minus the combat encounter that takes place um, right after this first section and then um, later on. Um, as far as going through this stuff, I, I feel like it's fairly straightforward, you can pretty much just copy what I'm doing. Now I moved this very, very slowly, and again, that's just to make sure I don't get caught because again, if I get caught... That's a game over, um, technically that's a death, and then I would have to restart. But for these enemies up here, you want to make sure you have explosive gel, and I try and time basically when the claw comes down, is when I put it on the ground. And then once the enemies move towards you, you just want to back up and let them kind of populate around the explosive gel, and then you'll detonate it like I did there, and that should take care of them. So up ahead is the next set, or I guess the final set, for this Scarecrow encounter of enemies. And this one um, is many more than the last. And I, if I remember correctly, I messed this up. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. Maybe I messed it up by moving away too soon, or maybe the game just uh, gave me bad RNG there. But um, I generally get, you know, all but one or two of them with the explosion. This time I missed like four or five of them. And oh my god, I almost got hit there. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I'm not exactly sure whether that was on me or on the game, but, um, I got through it without getting hit, thankfully. So, uh, I guess my advice is if you're doing this, um, similar to the first time, just try and time your explosive gel with the claws coming into the ground, and then do your best to get the enemies to populate as many of the enemies as you can around the explosive gel, and then you can detonate when it's safe.
So we want to make sure that we have Batclaw uh, equipped here and we're going to run not too far out from this cover and we're going to pull this guy and we're going to go in and take him down. Now if you run too far out from that cover where I stopped to pull him, you will get like a slight animation cutscene, whatever. Um, you can do that, it's fine. It's just a nice way to kind of skip that and save a little bit of time, so that's why I did it there. For the corner cover here, if I remember correctly, I missed this first one. Basically what I'm doing is I'm aiming for the chains that are hanging off the shackle on his left arm. And if you hit that, or aim for that, and then throw a battering, you'll hit him. And, uh, you know, you can be done with that um, encounter fairly quickly uh, without having to necessarily wait for him to expose his head. For these enemies, I like to wait. Uh, we'll jump over the first one and then wait for a counter opportunity. And I kind of uh, jumped the gun there, but whatever. Um, but uh, the reason I do that is because once, once in a blue moon, you'll get um, either the guy with the shock stick um, will not react properly, or one of the guys closest to the guy with the shock stick, as you're, you know, hitting him like with the first or second hit, he'll just go and hit you. And if you're not really, really paying attention or really fast on the counter, you're going to take damage. So, being a little patient there kind of just ensures that I don't take damage and that I'm in full control so that's that's why I do that so earlier I told you the library fight you know do that fight if you don't do it you'll have to deal with enemies so those enemies would be right here as we walk out the door um, I can't remember the exact number it's like five six somewhere in there but you would have to deal with them in this tight corridor which gives you a lot less mobility and option in um, not taking damage so uh, that's my that's my reasoning, and again, you know, thanks to the speedrunning community for giving me the explanation of why the hell I was getting enemies there when um, I, I was watching other people not get enemies there. So now I know, and now you know. So we have some enemies up ahead and I don't exactly, I, I kind of just copycat this, um, so I don't exactly know how it works, but I think what you need to do from all the practice I did was you need to hit this door um, before landing on the ground. Uh, for whatever reason, if you just land like right in front of the door on the ground, at least all the times I practiced it, it would, the door would just lock and you'd have to engage all the enemies that were behind you. Whereas for whatever reason, as long as you engage um, the door with Batman, um, then it will open, whether they engage you or not. So for these enemies, I like to come up on this side, get uh, three knockdowns, which just obviously reduces risk of taking damage and um, allows me opportunities to uh, get some hits in and uh, some takedowns. So. This is you know similar to all the other fights we've been doing. You know, do your bounce around, your your ping pong, do your um, you know your your uh, battering hicks. Uh, do takedowns when you can. If you need to build combo, um, basically do sprint kicks or do you know a dodge over them and then hit them a few times. Whatever you need to do to build combo to get the battering takedowns. But um, that's fairly similar to all the other fights we've done so far. So that's all I'll say on that.
He's taken control of the... There's always a way out. Always. So now that we have the sequencer, uh, right after we do this, you know, little tutorial section of how to use it, uh, we'll go ahead and um, gain access to both upgrades for it. And I'm going to go ahead and get those. Um, that's for, you know, a couple of reasons, but uh, it just, it aids in a couple of strategies and allows you to um, do things from a longer distance, which uh, a, a few times um, equates to being safer. So that's why we're going to pick those up. As we go into this area, you know, as we go around where Ivy was, we'll have uh, a lunatic in front of us. Basically, we're just going to sprint kick him and take him down. And that'll be how we deal with uh, basically all the ones that are um, in this uh, section coming up. So as we come out of the cutscene, we're going to go ahead and grapple up. And we're immediately going to go sprint kick the guy closest to us on the left. And then we're going to ping pong into the next two. And then we're going to dodge roll over. That's just to gain line of sight on this guy. And effectively what that's doing is it's keeping them spread out. It's keeping them CC'd, and it's also stopping them from getting weapons out of these two boxes that they keep trying to access. So we'll go ahead and take down this uh, this last guy, and then we'll have one left. And um, I'm really glad that what I <laughs> I'm really glad I threw my battering and didn't get my explosive gel there because I would have taken a hit. But basically, we want to pull the guy to the back of the room, knock him down, and then move to the front right there. Use explosive gel to prep for the next set of enemies. And then I want to take him down behind this middle section so that the enemy AI has to flow around it to get to me, which puts them basically all on top of the explosive gel and allows me to just go around and take them out one by one. Generally, you should get all but the last guy if um, RNG serves you well. Um, but regardless, it's a, a risk reduction no matter what, even if you uh, you know get, um, say, most of them and still two of them are up or something, then that's only two that you have to deal with that's easy and uh, much less risk than having to deal with all of them at the same time. Pacification system deactivated. So we're going to have a lunatic up ahead. We'll do the sprint kick again. We'll take him out. And then I'm just going to wrap around the left. And as we approach the corner here to turn, we'll want to sprint kick because the second one will be coming in. And um, that second one would always come in exactly that same way. Um, so it's not like he was already aggroed to me. He aggroes as you go to make that turn. So the timing on that sh should always be consistent. So I do want to note here, and it'll probably be obvious, but I go to multi-battering and I go to hit both of these ropes and for whatever reason, the second one didn't get hit, even though it uh, seemed like to me the telegraph was on both of them, but um, you should get both of them for whatever reason I didn't there, and I think that was the first time I've not gotten both of them, so <laughs> that was kind of weird, but whatever. Thanks again, Batman. Congratulations. Come on. So we'll have another lunatic here on this corner. Um, same as the last time. I, I actually initiated that a little, like, slightly late, which could have gotten me hit. So I'm lucky I didn't get hit there. But um, so just, you know, practice it like the other one. Just as you come around the corner, do the sprint kick, and uh, you should be fine.
Alright, so this is a pretty cool fight. So as soon as we come out of the cutscene, we want to go ahead and get explosive gel. We want to run to the right, put it on the floor, and as we back up, we should get four dropping. So we'll go ahead and put all of them on the floor. We should be able to get all of them. Um, generally on the very last guy, yeah, like that, he'll, he'll come up a bit, but that's fine. Um, regardless, we should be able to get most of them. Then we're going to go up to the top right, and we're going to stage our next um, explosive gel for when it's not electrified so it will all like the platforms always electrify in the exact same way and they follow the same uh, pattern so basically after the first set i go up i stage and then i drop back down and then i'm going to move back up once they're not electrified let these guys come over and once people are mostly up on the up on the railing um, or right in front of it that's when i'll explode it to get the most impact But uh, besides that, you know, we're just going around taking out the guys that are there. Um, this is generally what happens, I'd say 50 to 60% of the time, where you'll finish off all the ones here, and then the next set will come in as the bottom floor is electrifying. And that's, honestly, that's best case scenario, because then you're basically just doing a repeat of the first time. So we're just hanging out, doing what we can, waiting. That was very dangerous right there. Waiting for them to, um, uh, or waiting for the floor to not be electrified. And then once I get enough of them down, uh, what I should do is I go back up there, but I felt pretty comfortable on the ground floor that they were spread out enough and um, I didn't feel like I was in any danger to go and use that strategy of um, explosive gel, so. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So we have a couple enemies ahead of us. They're they're all like the psycho freaks or whatever. <laughs> um, so basically the strat is going to be we're going to grapple them um, and then finish them off on the ground. And that's pretty much what I'll do for every single one of these. There is a um, part in the courtyard where I strategically um, kick or strategically wait. And that's just so that I'm ensuring safety, and that, that's pretty much it. Other than that, um, you should be able to get to the next mission objective building um, without too much issue. Just follow what I do here. Good evening, residents of Joker Asylum. Some of our crazy enemies crashed the party early. And when I say crazy, I mean real psycho. Word of warning, if anyone sees a drifting fool barking at the moon, or maybe just spurring like a kitten, do your thing. Walk up to them, put your arm around them.
I should pick up Harley Quinn's trail. So we're going to have two guys ahead of us. Um, basically what I'm going to do is just uh, corner crouch and we're going to throw batterings into them. And the momentum of that hit will send them into the electric field. So that will take care of them. I don't need to worry about fighting them. As I go into this area, I'm going to want to go ahead and get battering, and then we're going to move off to this side until I get line of sight on that enemy, and then we're going to throw battering and then run past them and just go for the door. So this next section can kind of be a pain, uh, but the, the idea is very simple. So the prep for this is we want to get explosive gel right behind these four guys. Then we're going to walk far enough away and we're going to battering the two on the left and then explode the explosive gel and then take out the two on the left. And so the reason that I do that is because explosive gel knocks down enemies and keeps them down a lot longer than batterings. So we want to get the majority of them down right after so that I have enough time to deal with the um, two on the left. And the reason I prioritize the two on the left is just because it's a guy with a knife. And um, obviously they pose uh, more risk than just your average thug. So uh, that's that's pretty much the setup for that. You have to get the, explo or the battering hit into explosive gel off very, very quickly. And the other thing I'll note is the reason I walk all the way to the left away from the explosive gel so that the explosive gel doesn't stun me. If for whatever reason it stuns you, you will not have enough time to get to the two that you hit with batterings to take them out. Um, you won't be in any danger of getting hit. Your strategy just Thanks. won't accomplish the um, intended objective of getting the uh, knife enemy off the board. Well, aren't you the persistent one? That's Always one step ahead. It won't be long before I have an army of Titan monsters. Just imagine me being carried through the streets, stepping. You need to stop. I need to find a way through this mess. <laughs> So for these two enemies, there's not a whole lot to talk to here. Just come out of the vent, kind of do a horseshoe around the left, kick one guy, hit battering, take them out. Fairly simple and standard. So clearing out the room here, um, again, not a whole lot to talk to. Just follow what I do. These enemies will always be in the exact same place in the exact same way as long as you follow the route. Um, and it's fairly low risk. Uh, the, honestly, the only risk you have is this guy coming up in case you do something wrong. You could get shot, but um, it's such a low, low chance of happening. Uh, it's, it's next to zero, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. And then this guy, we're just going to pull him over the side. So that's, that's the room. Um, Again, not, not too difficult. Just follow what I did there and you should be able to get through it without any issue. Joker wanted the entrance to the Titan production plant guarded. I should pick up Harley Quinn again so I can find it.
All right, so for the two Titans, um, there's really not a whole lot to speak to here either. It's uh, pretty much just playing it slow, making sure that you're always safe, don't take any chances here. Uh, because worst case scenario, you just stay distance from them, and you only have to deal with one of two things, either they charge you or they throw a body, right? And both are fairly easy to deal with, so... Just take it slow and um, don't don't take any risk if you feel that they're too close to you, you feel that you're in a bad spot, whatever. Just find yourself in a better spot. Um, make sure that you always have the upper hand. What I will say is that um, when they, you know, as you take out one of their bars, right, at the top right, as you take out one of their bars and you deplete it, they'll take a knee and they'll be stunned. Now it's a very, 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 very low percent chance that this happens. In fact, it's only happened to me twice. But because it happened twice, that was enough for me to say, hell no, I need to uh, make, a, make a plan for this. What happens is when they take a knee, if you start attacking them and you get on their back and you start using them to flail around to hit the other enemy, there is a very small chance that when the game throws you off their back when you're coming out of that animation that you can get hit by the other one um i mean they like you have to have them really on top of each other one of them's not staggered they have to be facing the right way i.e looking at you um there's all these prerequisites that need to happen but because it can happen I made a rule that I would not attack them when they're taking a knee like that guy to my right right now. So that would be my suggestion to you if you're trying to do this no damage, just for consistency and safety's sake. Do not attack them when they're on a knee. The other thing is to get one of them to do this right here, which is explode the titan on that. Um, you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, it just saves a little bit of time as you come out of the fight because if you come out of the fight and those are still up you're gonna have to go over there use explosive gel on them to uh to blow them up which obviously takes a little bit more time and um there's really no need to do that when you can just be standing in a good spot when the opportunity arises to let them charge and blow them up so that's really all i have to say to this fight um again just play it safe don't fight them when they've taken a knee um and uh, try and get them to explode the, the Titan bat. That's pretty much it.
going to need something to get over this ravine. So for the section coming up, I'm going to end up having to deal with some enemies and I'm going to use the grapple to do that. What I want to state though is that you do not you do not necessarily need to do that. You can actually go a different route and you can just like reload checkpoint and you won't have to deal with these enemies or go this way at all. Um, unfortunately, like with my rule set, I don't like to reload checkpoints. So because that's against my rule set, I have to go this way. Oracle. The strategy, though, to deal with these is very simple. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're just going to use grapple and pull all these guys off. Um, what I will say is there can... The, you can run into an issue where some of these guys will... Well, they'll pretty much always dodge your first grapple, and then you'll get them on the second one if you're fast enough. But because they dodge the first one, if they dodge it behind a wall, um, to the left or to the right, if they're on those corners, you won't be able to get to them. If a, even a little bit of their body is showing, you actually can get them to move. You just have to use battering and throw batterings at them to get them to dodge back towards the center so that you can grapple them. Generally, you won't have that problem, but in case you're trying this and you run into that issue, that's the way to solve it. Worst case scenario, you get most of them and then you, um, you, know, you glide on over and uh, you know, deal with the one or two enemies or whatever's left. For the two enemies in front of us, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're just going to walk up uh, where we have a clear line of sight. We're going to multi-battering on them, and then we're going to go ahead and line over and take them out. The way that you take them out um, doesn't really matter. It's only two. So if you get over there fast enough, you can do what I did. If you don't get over there fast enough, then that's fine. So we're going to go up here, we're going to hit this first guy, and then we're going to go ahead and glide over. Now this is a very, very, very tight, it's very easy to mess this up. If you mess it up, you are going to take damage because you're going to land in front of the guys with rifles. So if you're going to use that strategy, you will need to practice the hell out of that. So um, make a save file, a save state, or whatever, you know, depending on if you're on PC or console. Practice the hell out of that because it is a very, 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 like thread the needle type strategy and you're gonna have to like get used to it so that pod appears to contain similar spores to the ones Ivy used to attack Gotham last year they're deadly so given that we do have spore pods now um, you'll see there's one in front of me basically the way to avoid these things aggroing onto you is just to crouch walk so uh, there will be times where I do that, where I slow down a little bit, but that's just for safety so I don't take some stupid hit that uh, I you know, don't need to take because you can just crouch it. I'm seeing seismic activity all... I Wow. 
So for this room of enemies, um, we're actually not going to fight anybody. <laughs> so, um, this is where the game introduces explosives on the gargoyle statues. So we're going to use that to basically pull the attention of the entire room. So we're going to come up here and then very quickly we need to get off of it. As it explodes, it'll pull the attention of basically everyone in the room. And then we're just going to drop down on this side and go ahead and um, use the sequencer on the uh, Joker bomb. And, uh, and then we'll move on. So nothing really to talk to here. When you do go to move after we do this, uh, just make sure you use detective vision and make sure that there's no enemies that are going to be like in your line of sight. Because I want to say, if I remember correctly, yeah, this guy on the left, I believe he turns around. So normally I would just go if it was free. I would just drop down and thread the needle there. If I had done that prematurely, that guy would have seen me and it would have been game over. So just uh, play it slow. Make sure that there's no one that's going to see you as you drop down. And then you're good to go. For this scarecrow section, again, similar to all the other ones, there's not a whole lot to talk to here. It's fairly straightforward what you need to do. So just follow what I do here and you should get through it without any issue. We are going to have more skeleton enemies, same as we did last time. So uh, we'll be using the same strategy using the explosive gel. And, uh, you know, get as many as you can. Use batterings again to uh, stun them or stall them out if you need to. Um, but. Get as many as you can and then, you know, finish off the ones that remain.
recent successes with Bruce Wayne, a classic case of split personality if I ever saw one, have cemented our reputation as a pioneer in slaughterhouse. Are you scared to come I out and face your fears? But no progress, but he seems to enjoy his work, so what the heck? Our new patient's ward is manned by Waylon Jones. I'm assured that he has cured almost every patient sent to him and boasts empty beds in all his wards. What are you, Batman? Chicken? So this section can be quite a pain in the ass, um, but it's it's fairly simple. So we're going to run to the left, we're going to go ahead and Explosive Joe um, on the left, and we're going to explode that. You could do it on the right, it doesn't really matter, I just do it on the left. Um, but once you do that, you're not going to have time to do it again, so you're basically just going to pretend this is a room full of just regular goons, right? So, I mean, some of them have swords, but that's fine. Um, the good thing is they basically die in one hit, so um, use the ping-ponging back and forth, use uh, batterings, and that'll be good. So as we kill the last one, we're going to want to um, explosive gel on the right, explosive gel on the left, and then I always put an explosive gel in the middle as well, just in case any funky business happens where... Um, I said funky, I meant funny business. <laughs> any funny business happens where sometimes the skeletons that come up will move early... So um, if they get a little bit towards the center, you can just go ahead and hit them. Now I tend to stay on one side, generally it's on the right, and um, I'll go ahead and blow that up. Usually that guy right there is not dead, so um, I usually try and punch him. But now we're just, we're just buying time and waiting for the charge. So once we get the charge, we'll batarang, we'll move out. And then from here, it's right back to what we were doing um, with the group prior to, right? So um, just making sure, you know, you're building your combo, you're getting your batterings off, blah, blah, blah. Same thing that we've been doing for many, many, many different groups of enemies. And once that's done, that's, that's it. Scarecrow, or this Scarecrow section is completed. And then we can move on. down there so the enemy is ahead of us um there is a strategy i started doing early on where i would go up similar to uh, you know a couple of areas ago where i put explosive gel behind the enemies and blew it up i i used to do that here and then i decided not to because if it gets messed up you now have to fight these guys in very 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 close quarters and a very tight corridor um, which is not ideal so i started running back and then, for whatever reason, I remember this clear as day, uh, the sprint kick just failed. Like, the combat system just broke on me there, and I was like, holy shit! So I hit this guy, luckily, 
the uh, the gunner was walking around the corner and was I was able to connect all three batterings with all three enemies. That was that was complete luck right there. Um, why the combat system failed on me, I don't know. That's that should have been a sprint kick, but it wasn't. So I I defeat them so that when I drop down, these enemies are unaware, and I do that so that I can open up as you saw with the multi battering there, and that's just to make sure that. I'm in the most control I can be of this area because these two boxes the enemies keep trying to go for um, have guns in them, right? So we obviously don't want them to get guns. So it just gives me the ability to control the area, control the fight a little bit more than if I was to just run past those enemies up top because you can't do that. I could have just ran and not fought them and dropped down. But if you do that, these enemies are already alerted and they're already going for the gun boxes. And they're going to be more spread out instead of clumped up, which is um, not ideal because it makes it harder for you to get batterings on as many as possible and the ones that you really want, which is to keep them away from the box. All right, so now we're heading over to do the uh, <laughs> the infamous, um, you know, killer killer croc sneaking section or whatever you want to call it. There's really not anything for me to talk to here. Um, there is no way to take damage here. You either it's a pass fail criteria. You either get it or you don't. If you mess up, you're gonna get you're gonna die and you're gonna get the retry screen. Um, whether that's killer croc grabbing you from under the platforms. Whether that's you falling in the water, whatever. If you mess up, you it's game over. And for me, that's a death, which is against my rule set, so I would have to restart the whole game. So, again, there's nothing really to talk to here. If you're going through this section, my advice is to take it slow. Um, you don't want to take it too slow, because then you're going to have to deal with him more. But when I say take it slow, like, for example, when you're aiming your line launcher, right? Um, you know, don't rush it. It's, it's not a speed run. Don't rush it. Take it slow. Make sure that you get the right angle. Make sure you're not going to get obstructed and then get knocked into the water or whatever. So, um, Aside from that piece of advice, just follow what I do here and you should be able to get through this without any issue. Now, I will say I had one run where I think it was on the third... Maybe it was the fourth sample. I can't remember, but towards the end of this, I had the game basically bug out on me where as I was getting the sample, These Killer Croc comes up anymore. and attacks you and you're in the animation of taking the sample so you literally can't dodge, you can't do anything and then you just get killed. And um, I reloaded checkpoint, tried it again, reloaded checkpoint, tried it again. I did it like four or five times and it kept happening, which I had never seen before. So something leading up to that happened that put the game in that state. And it was basically like setting you up for failure. It was impossible for you as the player to not die. And when I say that, I mean like even if you reloaded, there's nothing you could do. So like really what you would have to do there to get past it is either try going to some of the other samples, which obviously for no damage doesn't matter because my criteria was already a fail, um, or you just have to restart the entire game, which is what I ended up having to do anyways because I died. So if that ends up happening to you where you're like getting a sample and he just attacks you, that shouldn't happen. Um, and it's probably the game is bugged at that point.
got enough spores. I need to get back to the Batcave and formulate the antidote. Oh, I get it. You've activated a sonar beacon down there. Clever. Oracle, I'm getting out of here. What about Croc? He won't be a problem. will be your tomb. So we do have a group of enemies ahead of us. Um, we're not even going to mess with them. We're just going to grapple like or line launch right through them. And then we're going to climb up and be out of the area. So no need to fight these enemies. Scan and open. So for the enemies coming up, um, I actually had something happen that I've never had happen here, which is that they were already looking at me. Um, usually they're just talking, but uh, <laughs> as we go into the area, we're just going to use the Ultra Claw to uh, pull as many of them as we can. Generally, they're not spread out like that. Um, usually they're right up to like where the water runoff is. And you can basically pull three of them or at least one of them down and they'll just automatically be knocked out when they fall down that ledge unfortunately that didn't happen here but um yeah the the big point here is that you want to make sure that you pull the guy with the gun so that the gun is off the board so for the plants here um you can technically go around these using um using your zip like your zip line and whatnot or your line launcher but it's not 100%, whereas this is close to 100%. Generally, that very first plant, sometimes as you're sneaking up to it, will just fucking shoot shoot at you for some reason. Um, if that happens, you just kind of run away and kite them around, and um, you shouldn't take a hit. But um, I like to just take out the four plants um, from that first one through this one, and then from here we don't have to worry about taking any more out. What's he doing now? I'll look into it.
The Titan water seems to be corrosive, but it shouldn't trouble the suit. What have you found out? I'm not sure you're ready for this. No, but go ahead. Joker's pumping all the waste product from the Titan process into that chamber. It acts as a kind of natural storage tank. Once it's full, it releases the water into the Gotham River. Normally, it's according to the plans I have on file. There are three control rooms. The first is directly above you. I'll shut them all down. What will happen if this Titan stuff reaches Gotham? It won't reach Gotham. You heard him. Done yet? So similar to the last section, um, this is another thing I'd never seen before. Uh, so once we pull this wall down, we'll have three enemies come up, and we're supposed to Ultra Claw them. Um, as you can see, the reticle was on all three of them, and for whatever reason, the guy in the middle was able to see it and dodge back. So I'd never seen this before, so I was like, what the hell do I do? So I tried, maybe I throw Batarang to reposition him, maybe I line a side him to re-engage his AI. And then I just decided, hey, I think I could just climb up and pull his ass. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's that's what we do here. So if that happens to you, again, I've never seen that in all the attempts I've done. But if it happens to you, do that. For this guy, I like to pull him. Um, you could run in and kick him, but why take the risk of messing that up? When you could just pull him, and then it's 100% guaranteed you won't take damage. So That's that spot. For these two guys, basically we're just going to pull them and then finish them off uh, with um, ground finishers. And then we'll move on. So I go to the left here. You can actually go to the right if you want. It doesn't really matter which way you go first. You have to do both of them. I save the right side for last because that's the one that always worries me. <laughs> um, and this is the easier of the two, so I kind of ease myself into the, the challenging section. Um, not a whole lot to talk to here. Uh, what I like to do is when you when you bring up the telegraph or like the crosshair, reticle, whatever, I like to just walk it in slowly. And that ensures that I'm as far back as possible. That way the guys down there can't throw the objects and hit me. Uh, but once you, once you get that, you know, finished out, then that's it. We just walk out the room and we'll go to the other side. Now for this side, we're actually not going to fight a single person. And this entire room is goons with guns. I think there's seven of them, if I remember correctly. So what you're going to want to do here, <laughs> and it's, it's very, very, very um, like precise. So you're going to wait for the guy that's in the far back to turn his back. When he turns, you're going to fly over, and then you're going to slowly edge forward until you get the hack um, prompt, and then you're going to use it. If you do not do it that far back, you'll actually go down and kneel in line of sight of that guy so that when he turns around, he'll see you. But um, if you do it properly, that'll happen. You'll get that done, and then we can just go back up to the top. Now, technically, 90% of the time, you can just go here. Um, I decided to wait because I actually lost a run like four or five attempts ago. Right here, as I went down like this and I landed, somebody saw me. I still don't know who saw me and I don't know why. Um, but that's why I decided to just hold and wait. Um, and basically just make sure that everyone was looking away from me before I went. And um, yeah, so now we're on to <laughs> literally the hardest section in the entire game. Literally the hardest section in the entire game. <laughs> Um, so this is the triple elevators, or what I call triple elevators. We're going to have a titan come out, and then we're going to have just a crap ton of thugs come out at us. And what's the dangerous about this area is just how small it is. So you're having to deal with and juggle all these different variables in such a confined space. Which, you know, if you've watched up to this point, you know, you understand now, I hope that you don't want to be in a confined space. You want the biggest possible area that you can get to give yourself the maximum amount of options. So I went ahead and picked up some upgrades just to slightly help out with this section. And now we've got the Titan coming out. So as the Titan comes out, he's going to do a charge. And I stand center, that way he hits the center. And then I move off to the left because the opposite elevator is going to open. And that'll allow me to pull. Now, the Titan swung towards my direction there, which he usually doesn't do. 
Um, so the name of the game here is to prioritize the thugs while watching the Titan, very similar to the Bane fight, the start of the run. And then prioritize running to an electric fence and using the Ultra Claw to pull as many of them to the fence as possible. It doesn't matter whether you get them to impact the electric fence or not. If they impact the fence, they automatically get taken out, which is why this strategy is so strong. But really what you want to do is you're just trying to control the area. You're trying to keep as many of them down on the ground and away from you as possible. So once we take out the last thug, then our primary objective is to get that first of three Titan health bars down. Now what I want to do is I want to position so that when that health bar gets down, he's away from the elevator. So what you'll see that I do here is I'm going to go ahead and move to a section and then I'm going to let him charge in and I'm going to wrap around to the center electric fence. That way I've got line of sight on both elevators and I'm just going to start ultra clawing as much as I can. <laughs> I remember that. Um, I play the game in borderless window um, and my mouse cursor left the game somehow and went out to my, uh, my third monitor and paused the game, I guess. But anyways, so um, yeah, so again, prioritizing the thugs, making sure I'm staying away from them as much as possible. I give a very small brief hold after I do dodges over enemies in case he's going to charge because if the titan charges the um, thug ai will stop aggressing on you so you'll be safe to just focus on him and the dodge or the run out so oh my god that was so close that was a really stupid pull i should not have done that that was way too close on timing so yeah i mean this is this is what you're going to see for the whole run basically now i try and battering this guy to keep him away from me because I see that the Titan's going for a throw, and unfortunately it didn't hit him, but that's that's fine, it doesn't really matter. Again, we're just focusing on the thugs and trying to pull them into electric fences whenever possible. Now, if I remember correctly, like my camera shake is so bad here. Like I, I keep the game pretty sensitive um, as far as like mouse sensitivity goes, and usually I can control that, however, the last two attempts before I got this run, I lost right here. So I was like really in my head and I was so fucking nervous right here. Like my hand was shaking and shit. <laughs> and so like the camera, there's this like wiggle thing sometimes when I'm moving Batman. is because my hand was like literally like my heartbeat was pounding. Because I knew, I knew if I could just get past this and nothing else go wrong, I had this run. And so I wanted to get him to charge into this room in preparation for the next set of enemies. Um, unfortunately, I ran to the left too soon, and the first couple of steps from the Titan always track you. But it's okay, he was far enough away from me that it was fine. I was able to pull these guys with no problem. So, there was the camera shake. <laughs> uh, past Hayate is so nervous, I'm like, oh my god. I could do this. Just focus, Hayate. Just focus, don't fuck up. So yeah, this is, again, just more of the same. There's there's not a whole lot to talk to here. It's really just... Again, and I'm going to reiterate, because this is the hardest section in the game, at least in my opinion, to no damage consistently, just because of the amount of variables and the small size of the room and what can go wrong. There's the camera shake again, because I knew he was about to throw. Ah! Yep. And if I remember correctly, man, I had one guy that just would not fuck off from me, dude. He was just like, I tried pulling him into the, like, I don't know, my pull, like, distance was messed up, or... Um, I made a bad decision when I could have taken him down or something, but he just stuck with me, man. This one guy through, like, the last 60 seconds of this fight. <laughs> Which normally doesn't happen. Normally I'm able to get all of them off the board fairly quickly and then I can just focus on him, but... Is this the guy? This is the guy. This is the guy. He just... I, like, I could have taken him down right there, but he's so close. And if you get a ground pound, like, if you're that close, he's gonna auto-aggro onto you, which would have gotten you hit, so I can't do that. So he charges, I run around. So 
So I, I could have just kicked him and taken him down there. I think what I wanted to do is I wanted to just pull him into the, the electric fence over there. And he just, just a half a meter away or something. <laughs> I couldn't get him. I couldn't get He just wouldn't let me get him. This guy was resilient. He just would not leave me alone. Now this was super dangerous. I remember this because I moved off to the left to make sure that I didn't jump over this guy. And then I always lead the throw by moving the direction I'm going to dodge, which just pulled me right back to his direction. And I flipped over him. So finally that guy's ass is out of here. And then we can focus on finishing the Titan. And that's it, guys. That is, the, again, in my opinion, the hardest section in this entire game, um, at least for any percent, to no damage consistently. So that's triple elevators. Now we're just going to move up and, uh, you know, head to the next objective. So as we come through the door, you want to make sure that you're crouched, and as we get alongside this plant, we should be able to grapple up to the top. From here, we'll go ahead and zip over, and then from there, we'll um, we'll grapple up to the next part, and then fly down to the door. So make sure that you stay crouched here, just so you don't aggro the plant on the right. Then we're going to move this way, and we're going to grapple up to the tower. And then you want to wait for this guy to be in this position, climb up, and then we'll silently take him out. The reason I don't take him out with a battering and then ground take, like, finish him is because sometimes on rare occasion, he'll fall, like, beyond that corner cover and the guard that I just hit will, uh, will see you. So take him out silently when he's in that position and then uh, do what I did there, throw a battering and then zip across. Do you like what I've done with the place? My babies are growing, Batman. Come and see. So similar to the other plants um, that were, you know, in close proximity to us, I go ahead and finish this one and the next one off just to be safe. I'll kill you for that, Batman! Now as we come through the door, you're going to want to walk to the right. We're going to grapple up to the statue, and then we're going to swing over to the next one that's across from here. And then we'll just fly down to the door and, um, and then go in. So we're going to have a couple of enemies up front here, and technically two enemies. And basically what you want to do is you want to zip over and then drop down right in the middle and then zip over immediately across the, uh, the long gap. I mess it up right there because I hit the planter, but that's fine. But the reason you want to zip into that area is because there's a um, cinematic trigger there. And if you hit that, you'll go through a cutscene and then you'll have to... Um, You'll, you'll get those two enemies that'll aggro immediately onto you. So this is the hardest boss fight in the game, in my opinion. Um, the second hardest section in the game, in my opinion, to do consistently. Because of how damn inconsistent these vines can be. And the various RNG elements that can happen. So there's two phases of this fight. For phase one, basically all you're doing is avoiding the vines. Once you enter into this... She is going to start shooting these um, orbs at you. And so what I do is I go one, two, three after the third one I throw, and then I move. 
Now you could technically do that after the first one, after the second one, it doesn't really matter. I just feel most comfortable on the third one. I feel like it gives me a good middle ground to gauge what's going on and also I'm not waiting too long. Um, otherwise, um, when she does her like rapid fire shot of, you know, many of those orbs, um, right after that occurs you can get uh, two battering hits. And then as you probably have noticed that I haven't mentioned yet, um, in between all the mechanics here, just throw batterings. It does a little bit of damage to her and just helps push the fight along. So again, after the third shot, stop, throw battering, and move. And the reason that I do that, and the reason why it works, is because these objects are projectiles, meaning they have a travel time. So it's tracking you to a point as it leaves the vine. Um, and as long as you're constantly moving, like I'm always moving, then it will always impact behind you, so in the past, where you were, never where you are. So it's completely safe as long as you keep moving and um, you don't accidentally find yourself directly under one of them being shot at. So that's phase one. Phase two now starts, and in phase two, you're dealing with all the same mechanics, except now you're going to get enemies that spawn in, and... No matter what the first enemy that spawns in, just one, two, three them over the side like that. It works nearly 100% of the time. And then from there, it's really crowd control. So you need to prioritize the, um, the police officers. You need to prioritize them over everything else unless the vines are there and oh my god i was so lucky i forgot that happened holy shit i i don't remember that but i'm pretty sure in the moment i was shitting my pants that was so close um, for anyone that's not aware um which i don't know how you would not be aware but if you get caught in those vines you take damage over time um so that would be a run done right there but yeah this this fight is it's very difficult because of the small area and because of how much of the area is taken away from you and how many enemies you have to deal with at the same time. Now this is made a little bit easier in that as vines come up, you can actually get the, um, the police officers stuck in them and that kind of helps. So what we're doing here in phase two, she'll always do six attacks and they come at a faster cadence than the other one. So after the six attacks, she doesn't shoot anymore. So this is actually a lot easier than phase one, in my opinion. So I basically wait for the six shots, throw a battering, wait for the volley of shots, and then throw two batterings and repeat that cycle three times. And then you'll move back into, um, you know, the, the vines and the, uh, the police officers. So that's unlucky. <laughs> he kind of got kicked to the back of the area, but I got that guy off the side. So Again, the goal here is not necessarily to get them over the side. I mean, that's what you want to do, but if you can't do that, that's fine. Your goal is to keep them on the ground as much as possible, or to keep them wrapped in the vines as much as possible. And over time, you'll have opportunities like I had right there. Again, that was very, very close to the vines. Past Hayate, what are you doing? <laughs> um... But yeah, your goal here is just to keep them away so that you can keep doing these battering shots. You know, get two, get three, whatever. Put them on the ground again, avoid the vines, do a couple of battering attacks, whatever. Um, so like in, in essence, it's a very simple fight and a very simple strategy. It's just um, the execution of it given the RNG and how many things you're having to deal with at one time make it... Um, easily overwhelming at times and uh, you can literally lose this fight just due to bad RNG. Um, it doesn't happen often, but it can happen, so... But that's the fight. Um, once she lands, once the plant lands, it actually knocks all the enemies down. You don't need to finish these. I think I forgot <laughs> um, in the moment and then uh, realized that after I knocked out both of those guys that, oh, I don't actually have to finish them off, so... So as we finish the fight, um, we're basically going to line launch your zip over in this direction. It doesn't have to be precise. You're just going to line launch her over in this direction. You'll cancel off the line, and then we're going to fly down into um, this, uh, this area and go through the door and uh, get ready for um, this line launch to the door and then the enemies that follow. 
So for these enemies, they actually won't attack you. You have to initiate on them, but you can't get into the door unless you take them all out. So um, basically just, um, you know, super bat claw them and uh, finish the finish the guy that you didn't get and then you know get as many of these guys as you can and finish the last one. It's a very, very reliable strat, so it shouldn't give you too much issue. Now, as we go into this section, this is the third hardest section in the game, in my opinion. Um, and the second hardest non-boss fight. Just because this is basically the Bane fight. Or, sorry, not the Bane fight. This is the triple elevator fight with a little bit more room, but two titans. And it makes it very, very difficult. Um... For all the similar reasons that uh, the Bane fight and the Triple Elevator fight presented, which is having to deal with something charging at you and um, having to focus on that, having to focus on them throwing enemies at you, while also dealing with just a crap ton of just basic thugs running at you. So the juggling act you have to do for this encounter here to not take damage is uh is is a pain in the ass and like pretty much everything in this run there is some rng elements here that can get you hit it's a very very low chance but it can happen so um you know that's always something you're gonna have to contend with but for the most part the strategy for this is the same as the triple elevator except you can't take these guys out on electric fences so as we start this, I always run backwards. I kick one guy to build combo, battering, which always instigates the uh, the charge on the first one. And then I rinse and repeat that to get the second one charged. And then after that, there is no more scripted, hey, this happens every single time the same way. <laughs> after those two things, the rest of this is improv. It's literally just your knowledge and experience with the game and its mechanics and making sure that you are not taking any unnecessary risk here and that you're prioritizing throwing batterings at the titans because every time you throw a battering at a titan they will charge into a wall or a surface of some sort and that does damage to them i'm very lucky i, sh I should not have gone for that takedown i'm very very lucky that those two enemies stopped and didn't aggress on me um but anyways like i was saying you want to make sure that you're you're getting the titans um, with the battering so that they run into the walls because over time that will damage them down in and of itself you don't actually have to hit them to damage them down so really your focus is keeping them um, away from you doing batterings when they charge for that damage and then just keeping the goddamn enemies down on the ground as much as possible keep them away from you now as you can see some of these grapples i'm doing are grabbing guys above and that's a good thing, because at, those guys would later jump into the fight. If you pull them off the high ground, they automatically get taken out. Um, so that is best case scenario. So as you're doing these grapples, you want to be looking up. And you'll see that periodically I'll do that. I'll look up to see where there are enemies and opportunities to potentially pull them over to finish them off immediately. So that they can't jump down into the area and then I have to contend with them for, you know more or less the entirety of the encounter but really that's the fight um it's just you know everything you've done with titans and goons have basically been preparing you for this encounter so it's really just taking those skills and those lessons learned and applying them to yes a bigger area but a much more dangerous environment because you're having to deal with two titans if you were just dealing with one this area would be so easy, um, but because you have to deal with two, it makes it um, obviously more risky. So I'm lucky there weren't any enemies around me there. I'm also, yeah, I'm also lucky I didn't. Um, if any of those, if any of those enemies had been down on the ground in front of me, even like a second faster, um, they would have gotten up sooner, and I would have jumped over them and could potentially get hit. So, <laughs> so funny story with the pause here. Um, I got a work phone call <laughs> while I was doing this, um, and I was already expecting um, to get one, so uh, yeah, I had to answer this, so for about, I think it was like 45 seconds or something, I don't know, um, but 
that's that's the reason for the pause. So I'm sitting here on the phone answering a question and uh, that quickly we're done and, and back to the run. So usually when that happens, when there's an interruption, I usually lose a run. For whatever reason, my focus just goes to shit. But um, luckily that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, so at this point, you know, we've got one guy left, which is great, but the game will bring a whole bunch more in at some point. Um, so make sure that as you're doing this and as you whittle the field down, so to speak, oh, that was really close. And if I would have dodged a little bit later than that, I wouldn't have had time to dodge the second dodge and would have gotten hit. Uh, and that's the RNG aspect of it. I had to dodge away from the, the the one Titan because he was swinging, and the second Titan was going for a throw. And there's not a whole lot you can do um, sometimes with that stuff. You just kind of got to do, you know, make the play and hope that that play was was the right call and gets you through the the um, the area. I feel like I remember more enemies coming into the area. Okay, yeah, right here, because I take that guy out, so if you were paying attention at the top right of the screen, that guy that I just pulled over spawned in right after I took that guy out. Which means that there are going to be other guys that will spawn in um, here shortly. Yeah, you can see them up top right. I don't think I saw them when I was doing it, but I, you know, now that I'm not focused on this, I see them top right. At least one of them. That might be two. But when you don't have an... I mean, pretty much the entire time, enemies can drop in on you. And if they drop in on you off screen, like behind you where the camera cannot see them, you're not going to know. And you could think you're safe and then all of a sudden just get punched out of fucking nowhere. So make sure that you're always looking around. Once you finish off one of these guys, I mean, like those guys right there. They weren't on the screen, right? Now they are. <laughs> um... Which, uh, that right there is what I was talking about. I forgot that that happened, but that's what I was talking about. So, um, just make sure that you're always looking around. Make sure that you're always looking around, always moving. That way you don't have to worry about, um, being caught off guard. So if I remember correctly, I prioritize just doing damage to this guy, since it's only one guy left, or one titan left and one guy. Basically just keep him on the ground. Wait for the charges and um, make sure that he is on the ground before I go in to attack the Titan. That's pretty much it. I am very surprised that guy didn't get hit by the Titan. So that's that. Now I know that this guy is going to be up. See, I turned the camera right there. I knew he was going to be up off the ground. But because I was in an animation um, there, he wasn't going to attack me. So, right, you know, coming out of that, we just pull him and that's it. So that's that, and uh, now we're in final fight. This is the last encounter of the game. Um, and this is a fairly easy encounter, honestly. You know, we're basically taking a lot of the strategies from before and marrying them into this final fight. So we're going to run around in a circle, and uh, Joker will always do uh, the same number of slashes. Um, so I, I'm going to go ahead and put Explosive Gel down, and that's for these two guys. And that's just to, uh, you know... Hopefully get the RNG from the explosion to launch them into the electric fence to take them out. Otherwise, for other enemies, we're just going to pull them into electric fences. That's that's the goal here. Now, the difference between these electric fences and the other ones we've pulled enemies into is you cannot stand super close to them. Because the um, a a as we use the, uh, uh, the bat claw to pull these enemies in... It has that pullback animation that you see there, and that pullback animation can bring you into the wall. Um, I've, it doesn't, it's, it's not really an issue for the other ones, but for these, for some reason, it is an issue. So you want to make sure that you're um, slightly far enough away from the wall that that animation isn't going to cause a problem. 
So as we pull Joker down, um, we're basically going to run around and put explosive gel on both sides in preparation for the next enemies dropping in. Um, you have time to do this, or at least I never had an issue with Joker coming out of the, um, the stuck stage. So um, when he's stuck down there, you should be good to get those down and then you can go into him. From there, it's just, you know, same thing as phase one. We're going to run around, avoid his claws. He'll do a, a certain amount of slashes, and then after that, so like right here, he should be done, and then he'll go back up top. And then we're just going to move to the back of the room and wait and try and catch as many enemies as we can in these explosive gel um, explosions and hopefully put them into the wall. And then after that, it's you know more or less just crowd control, trying to pull them into the fences, same as before. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it. That's, I mean, that's basically the entire fight. We're doing it now. You're going to have to do it again. Um, so a couple things to note. So those little joker teeth that are coming in right there to my right, when you see those, you need to make sure you're throwing batterings at them. Um, if for whatever reason you can't hit it, run away from it because it is on a timer. So after a while, it'll explode. The other note to make is if there's any enemies in the arena, with the stun batons, you cannot pull them and then stand still. You have to move away because as they're kind of like, uh, 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 and then they trip and fall in front of you from the pull, if they impact you, that stun baton impacts you, so it will do damage to you. So you cannot stand um, where you pull them. Um, the last note is you need to be watching Joker. If Joker turns around, and I think this happens in this final phase, if I remember correctly. If Joker turns around and starts looking at the helicopter, and you have enemies still on the field, you cannot use the bat claw. Because for whatever reason, 85, 90% of this area um, that you could be standing in, if you're standing in it and you use the bat claw, you will pull him. And if you pull him, you'll go into an animation that you cannot cancel out of, and one of these enemies will walk up and hit you in the face. So um, that that's probably the most dangerous scenario in this entire fight. So like, if you remember anything, that probably needs to be hit. Um, so let's find out if he does it. So there's a stun baton guy coming in. So again, make sure you move away from those. Prioritize the Joker teeth. And again, we're still trying to get as many of these guys as possible into the uh, into the wall and electrify them. Because the difference between this um, this phase versus the other two is that you're not going to have enough time. So yeah, right there, boom. So I didn't use bat claw for that guy. I used just a battering to uh, finish him off and push him into the uh, electrified fence. But yeah, in that phase three, you're not going to have enough time to um, finish the enemies and then deal with him because he'll just call in more enemies if he turns around from the helicopter. So uh, just keep that in mind as you're going through it. And that's it. That's Batman Arkham Asylum completed on hard mode without taking any damage. So if you've stuck around till this point, I want to say thank you for giving me the gift of your time and attention. I hope this challenge run was educational and entertaining. If you enjoyed this run, please consider liking the video, subscribing, and maybe sharing it with a friend or someone that may be interested in this game or this run. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I do make it a point to answer everyone back as long as it's engaging. With all that said though, I want to say thank you again for your time and attention, and I hope to see you back on the next run. What? <laughs>